Boys, we're back. Off of a terrible, terrible weekend for your man here. I took a big fat L, wasn't even close. None of my guys showed up and to be honest, I'm feeling a little down about it. It was, uh, it was pretty sad, I had one guy score more than 20 points and I think that was it. But we do have Hunter here coming off a easy dub. How, how are easy you dub. feeling? You feeling better than me? I feel a little better. I mean, you didn't score much less, so um, I think your team's still pretty good. You got a chance. Sometimes guys just don't perform. And the guy I played, Jake Jacob, he just didn't really know his team just didn't come out to play. But I think he's got a pretty good team too. It's just week by week and see what everybody can do. Feels like it was a weird NFL week as a whole, right? Like, a lot of teams really didn't show up. A lot of the big teams lost. You had Kansas City lose, you know. Mm -hmm. and Buffalo lost, now they lost to a good Miami team, but it just feels like it was a weird, a weird NFL week. A lot of the stars didn't really show up. It was kind of, yeah, a, lot kind of, of a down teams. week, you know? Yep, a lot of low scoring. It seems like Lucas got most of the stars that yes. performed on his team this week, just like last week. So. Shocker, right? Shocker. Low week for everybody, except for one person. Look yep. at more moms holding down that top spot. He texted, we, we were texting back and forth a little bit. This weekend, and I think the final text I just sent him, I was like, your team is absurd. Like, mm -hmm. period, end of discussion, nothing else to say. Like, it's crazy. two back-to-back 200-point -back weeks in a 12-team league. So I'm like, like I'm that's insane. Crazy. That's like, the average is like 120, you know what I mean? You, you have a good week if you hit 120 yep. in a 12-man league. And to see him doing back-to-back 200-point -back weeks, crazy. insane. Lamar Jackson has been absolutely worth it. And he even talked about the Devontae Smith pickup at the draft where he was like, you know, everyone's hype about A.J. Brown and he believed in Devontae Smith. And He's after week him. one, you're like, dude, why would you believe in Devontae Smith? But look at him. It's oh, paying off for him. So yep. let's get into it. Let's talk about this week. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and start off with some trades. So we had some huge trades going into the weekend um, from the middle of the week. And we have our guy Hunter here who was involved in both of them. One of them, he actually made the trade. The other one, he was going to make the trade, but then someone else slid underneath him, got in there, snatched him from him. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the first one that happened in the middle of the week. This one happened before any game started on Wednesday before the week. So I'm going to pull this up here. You guys can see this right in front of you here. So we have Jacob and Hunter. Jacob is Call of Duty. Hunter, H4123, obviously. And uh, we have Jacob receiving... A.J. Brown, J.K. Dobbins, and Jamar Chase for Devontae Adams and Derrick Henry. So, what motivated you on your side here to go after and get these two players? Uh, I just think Derrick Henry was a really good buy low guy this week. Um, two rough games, but it's still Derrick Henry. You know, Tennessee looked horrible on prom time. Everybody watches that and thinks, oh, Derrick Henry's done. But... I've got faith, you know. That was that was me. Yeah, I, thought they I, were like, I was thinking it at the time, but I'm like, you know, let's stay smart, let's stay strong. Um, in the colder months, he, I feel like he always does better. You know, team start, you know, Cooper Cup, those guys kind of slow down. It's cold. Derrick Henry, that's when he takes advantage. And Devontae Adams is a stud wide receiver. So you gave up AJ Brown and Jamar Chase, who mm -hmm. arguably two of the young stars stars in this league, mm -hmm. really really good players, but. You get Devontae Adams back, you get Derrick Henry. I was one of those guys with Derrick Henry where I was like, yo, he might be done coming mm -hmm. off an injury, coming off a terrible week against Buffalo. Like, yep. it was like, Rough. I don't know if they're going to bounce back. You know, mm -hmm. they're not looking like a good team. They may go full rebuild here. Who knows? And you capitalize off it. Now, we can segue this into your matchup. We can mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that here. Um, you played against Jacob this week. Oddly enough, you guys make this trade. You go into this trade. And right off the bat, you win the game. So right. we can evaluate it six weeks from now and kind of see, okay, how is it looking now? Exactly. How's the trade? Who won? Who lost the trade? Mm -hmm. After week one, it works out great in your favor. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. we've got a lot of time before we, can, uh, before we can determine who really won and who lost. And right. then fast forward to, was it Friday? Friday, I believe. Yeah. Friday, 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 you begin afternoon. talks with Braden, right? Yeah. You're, you're going back Joe and forth. Sense. You're trying to get Joe Mixon. Now, did you start the talks or did he start the talks? Who initiated it? He started the talks. He sent me Joe Mixon and uh, Robert Woods, which the care less about Robert Woods with Mixon. You know, another yes. low running back who struggled yes. um, for Keenan Allen and Brees Hall. You know, Brees Hall is a kind of a, 
you know, 50-50 split back right. for the Jets. And Keenan Allen's been hurt, kind of older. They've got a lot of targets, too. There's a lot of guys stepping up in that offense. Um, so I thought it would be a good one to jump on, but I was thinking about it. and then. But you were going to take it. You were planning on taking it, I was but you were just thinking it. about it. Yep, I was going to I was going to take that one. Um, but. And so then you're in the middle of your work day. You're mm-hmm. just going about your business. And then what? You just get hit with the notification. I see the trade's been completed, and I'm like, oh, we've got a trade. And then I look, and I'm like, freaking missed out I thought you know dang it that was a big one I missed out on but you know we'll see as it goes on it, it kind of worked out for me this week um, but I think um, who was it that was that so so Jacob turns around and does another trade and he ends up trading JK Dobbins who you just gave him mm-hmm. and gives him to Braden. so Braden. between Braden and Jacob two Owen two teams at the right. time trying to get their their teams turned around here we have Braden receiving Deontay Johnson Jerry Judy and J.K. Dobbins, and giving away Robert Woods, Joe Mixon, and Samaje P. Ryan. So really gives away the Bengals running backs, Joe Mixon, P. Ryan, and Robert Woods, who, like you said, kind of a throwaway in this, just an additional piece. Mm-hmm. Um, so Joe Mixon being the center point of what he gave away and getting in return, Deontay Johnson, Jerry Judy, and J.K. Dobbins. So looking at this, Obviously, everyone has their different point of views here. I, I do like Braden's side a little bit more. I, um, I like the two receivers he gets there, and then he gets the option of like, or not the option, but the chance of J.K. Dobbins hitting, which yeah. obviously going into this weekend, Braden was not able to play Deontay Johnson because mm-hmm. he had already played going into the time that the trade happened, so he was not available to him. And then you have J.K. Dobbins, who it's his first week. So Braden gets hurt by this trade this weekend, because he was not able to pretty much play two of those players. He played Dobbins, but Dobbins did nothing because it was his first week back. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it did not help him this weekend at all, but I think down the line it will help him. So. I did too. I think that was a better trade he got. Some good depth on him. So I think that was a good trade for him. So there's our uh, week two trades. And so we will uh, we'll analyze those later on down this season and see, uh, see what it looks like. So let's jump into these matchups. We'll start off with mine first. Absolutely terrible. I've already said it. Nobody showed up for me from... Top to bottom, everybody just pretty much single digits. Marquise Hollywood Brown gave a good effort to try to carry us on his back, and even that wasn't enough. Nope. Just a bad week. I don't even regret not starting anybody. I didn't start Terry McLaurin because he was going up against Darius Slay, who the previous week had just shut down Justin Jefferson. So yep. I was like, Terry McLaurin already wasn't having a great season. Didn't really think he was going to do anything special. He had 16 points. Good week for him, but nothing crazy. So uh, Josh Shirley. Straight up beat me. Good job. Cordero Patterson went off. He had a great week. Kudos to him. Not much to say. Yeah, I mean, Zeke outscored Aaron Jones. What is it, 2017? I mean, what's going I mean, <laughs> Zeke looked pretty good last night, which is crazy. Uh, Tyler Lockett played well. James Robinson. I mean, everybody thought ETN was going to be the guy on that team, but he's coming Yeah, that's been shocking, man. James Robinson, great, he's, he's so. holding on to that spot. And but, uh, yeah, all year long. Yeah, but his team came out and did what they had to do. Let's go to yours. You and Jacob, we've kind of talked about this with your guys' trade. You won this one by a landslide. Yeah. Pretty easy. You're feeling good. You're now 2-1. and one. You you started off 0-1. You got two wins. You're, you're back toward the top, getting away from that haircut there. Yeah. Um, my question for you is how do you feel about DJ Moore? Because I'm a DJ Moore stand. I love DJ Moore. I've tried to get him in multiple leagues. I never seem to end up to be able to get him. Mm-hmm. I've tried to trade for him in other leagues. I've always liked DJ more the talent, but this year with Baker Mayfield, it looks really bad. I love you, DJ Moore. I think I always get him every year, it seems like, in fantasy. Yeah. And um, he always does well. This is a name not really a lot of people care about. Right. Um, Panthers are kind of a smaller franchise, I feel like, so they don't really think about him. He's their number one guy. They paid him a bunch of money. I don't think Baker's the answer for the team. I just – McCaffrey's struggling in there. He's not getting – he's, he's what did he catch? Two too. balls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what did Moore get? One catch. Bad, like, but uh, but you got the win, so yep. awesome. Uh, let's move on. Next matchup here, Braden and Shut. So this one came down to the end. Uh, we had two zero and two teams. One of them was going to get the win. It looked like it was going to be Braden for the majority of the week. Let's be honest. Neither of these two teams deserve to win at all. Both of these guys have had good weeks, but this was not either one of them to score less than eighty five points and get a dub. Should not be possible. Mm-hmm. Um, you just looked through everybody on there is just red. Nobody met their predictions nope. besides the one man that it came down to. At the end of the day, going into the final night, it came down to C.D. Lamb, and I think he had to score about 18 points or so to win the game, and he scores 22 yeah. in a – did you watch much of this Dallas Cowboys? I did. He dropped a 40-yard pass. pass. Beautiful um, pass. Lapped it off, which was kind of like, wow, is he like, 
yeah, like what's going on here? And I, I thought it was hilarious that he's like tapping his chest like mm-hmm. on me and it's like, we know, man. Obviously. Like, yeah, we know. That was not Cooper Yeah, that was, that was rough, but he came back, got a touchdown, almost got 100 yards and got him the win. Got him the win. So, and like we said, Braden kind of got, with the trade that he did, he kind of sacrificed this week in a way, knowing that he wasn't going to be able to play who would be his wide receiver one in Deontay Johnson. And, uh, and Jerry Judy did not show up. So mm-hmm. hopefully that trade will uh, pay dividends later on down the year since it did in week one. On to the next one, we've got Blake and Marcos. Blake has been super consistent. You've got Book of Mormons, who is 3-0, who's won every single week, and who has these ultra highs. Blake has started off number one. He's dropped down to number two because he's not having these 200-point matches, but every single week his team has shown up. Mm-hmm. He looks really good, really, really good. strong. He's 3-0, kind of flying under the radar because Book of Mormons is number one. Blake has a strong shot to win this thing this year. Yeah, he's really solid around. I mean, Hurts has been playing amazing. I mean, he looks like top three quarterbacks in the league right now. Um, these first three weeks, running back solid, wide receiver solid. I mean, if he, all he needs is pretty much that fl- those two flexes to put up some points, and it's hard to beat him. I mean, Chase Edmonds did it. Gabe Davis put up six. So, yeah, um, that's all he needs, and I don't. It's going to be hard to beat him for sure. He's yep. very uh, solid. Yep. And Marcus' team didn't really do bad. Obviously, you want to see a, if Justin Jefferson has a decent week. If he just puts up 10 or 11 points, Marcus is around 120 points, and he's around the average. So mm-hmm. not a terrible week from him, nothing great, nothing special, but more about Blake's team just showing up every single week, yep. tried and true, guarantee you can depend on him. So on to the next one. Another close matchup came down to the end. Like I said, we were watching Shuts and Braves to see, hey, can C.D. Lamb get him the win? C.D. Lamb did. On this matchup, it came down to the final two players. Um, Philip had Tony Pollard, Sam has Noah Brown, and they're going at it for each other. And I think it was pretty close to tie, I want to say. I think Philip already had maybe a little bit of an edge, or, mm-hmm. or Sam had a little, one of them had just a tiny edge, but it was pretty much tied. Whoever gets it wins this matchup. And of course, Tony Pollard wins by point one and takes the victory. It came down to less than a point. Yep. So crazy. Um, I didn't realize it was happening last night watching the game, how close it was going to be, but. Yeah, Tony Pollard held on. I mean, did it. I mean, other than that, I mean, Christian Kirk, he's been playing amazing for however. Yeah. I don't know how much he was drafted for, but his value has been $3. That's and insane. he's the sixth-ranked uh, wide receiver, so that's Steel crazy draft, for sure Good so far. Part, but man. Super close game. Really yeah, good Yeah, great game. And I'm going to talk about this a little more in the next video, so I won't talk about it too much. Sam, I've been riding on Sam all year about, hey, he's going to come up. He's going to do well. Another great week for him, 120 points, meeting the league average, doing a good job, mm-hmm. and he loses to a team that does good. Sam didn't have a bad week. His team played well. Would have beat half the league again. Unfortunately, it's a loss. He'll look to bounce Eckler back next and Kamara. Week. That's the two that's killing I, it. Right I don't now. know what's going on there. I, I thought know, those were great yeah, picks. I did Kamara too. looks I, I, scary. I don't know. Yep. Missing Drew Brees, so yep, I want to make sure that phone is. call. Yeah. Um, and on to the last matchup, we don't need to talk about this much. Lucas absolutely steamrolls Josh Locke. Nothing Josh Locke could have done. His team could have played really, really good, and he doesn't win this matchup. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to do. You came in here, and the first thing you said when you walked through the door is, what are we going to do to stop Book of Mormons? We may just have to all come together and put like <laughs> put a super team put together. Put a super team together. To I think if we put all our players like, together on one team, it would still be a close game. <laughs> this weeks like that, I mean, crazy, crazy man. And this this may be a, a Kevin Durant Warriors situation here. We're gonna need something special to beat them. But mm-hmm. man, I don't know. I don't know what to do. He's he's hit it, and it's not that it's been like crazy trades or like he hit the waiver wire week one it's this was purely his draft strategy his draft. so he, he came out and he did a great job and his team's hitting and mm-hmm. we'll see how long it can hold his bench i will say his bench did not do anything so he is right now depending upon his, his starting lineup but yeah he's hard, hard to fall Hopkins coming hard to fall too. anything and he does have DeAndre which Hopkins, is scary yes. so the, the rich get richer right so let's look at these standings ending week three here we've got book of more moms and Saquad, Saquad Squad at the top, both undefeated, number one and two. They stay the same this week. Following, you have Trap Daddy Thatcher at number three, Josh Turley. And then myself, Philip, and Hunter all tied pretty much for that third place spot at two and one. At one and two, we have Shucks and Village Idiots, Josh Locke. And then still fighting for a dub, we have Sam 
Call of Duty and Brayden, Catalina Wine Mixon. Now we need them two to switch their names. Call of Duty no longer has swapped. Yes, Call of Duty and Catalina Wine Mixon need to switch Brayden Jacob because you guys know because you guys no longer have those players. So um, that'll do it. That wraps up the standings. Tune in Thursday. I've been inconsistent and I apologize. My man Hunter got on to me last week. I'm gonna do better. Thursday night, you will see our prediction videos for week four. So. Thank y'all for tuning in. We will see y'all then.